Alrighty, so before the game between DC United versus the Philadelphia Union is going to kick off at the time of this recording, about an hour and a half to start, uh, I'm going to do the preview of the 11 games that's going to be happening on Saturday, and because we once again have a lot of games that's going to be happening on Saturday, you know there's going to be a lot of overlap, and in fact, once we get into the meat of the MLS action and the busiest time, which is around that 7 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Pacific time, all the way up to around 9 o'clock, there's going to be 8 games that's going to be happening at the same time. And most likely, uh, during those time, I won't be able to watch any of these teams because I'm, of course, going to be Groundhog on Saturday. I mean, anytime when there's like 8 games at a time, you know I might as well just kind of throw my hands up in the air and just say, you know what, it's probably not, not worth, worth it. Try to keep up as much games as possible. And let's just kind of watch the highlights in terms of some of these games. But one thing I will say is that I still will watch some of the biggest game for, for this week, which, you know, I, of course, will be watching El Trafico tonight. But I'll also be watching the Cascadia Derby that will also happen tomorrow. But before we talk about the Cascadia Derby, which is the afternoon noon game, we'll talk about the early game, which is NYCFC versus the New England Revolution, which starts at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 1.08 p.m. local time. And speaking of NYCFC, I believe they played the Red Bulls uh, in the next match week. You know, Heineken Rivalry Week does span these two weeks. It's not just this match week number 19. But I guess it's, it's kind of a rivalry too. I mean, NYCFC playing uh, against the Revs. Two teams that, of course, face off against each other in the playoffs. And you can even say this is kind of a rematch of the Eastern Conference semifinal that we saw last year. Now, this game, unfortunately, is going to be on, on Twitter. And that, at least, you know, if there is going to be a game on Twitter, you know, I, I'm actually, I'm kind of surprised that this game is on Twitter and not the, the game between FC Dallas versus the Houston Dynamo because, you know, another derby that we want, we will see in the Saturday action besides the Cascadia derby is the Florida derby and all, all, also the, the Texas derby and the Rocky Mountain Cup. And usually, I would think the Texas derby would be the game that, that the game would be on Twitter. But no, this game is going to be on Twitter. Twitter instead, and in terms of the all-time meeting between both of these teams, 9-4 and 8 between both of these teams, but the last five head-to-head match, uh, it was a 2-2 draw between both of these teams, but that was the playoff series where NYCFC was able to win in a penalty kick shootout. Before that, it was a 2-1 win that the Revs had against NYCFC, a 2-0 win that NYCFC had against the Revs, a 3-2 win on the road against NYCFC, and then a 2-1 win against NYCFC on the road. So it's safe to say that, you know, the Revs does have have NYCFC number at least in the regular season. But yeah, you know, coming into this game, and especially knowing that NYCFC has been kind, kind of ice cold lately and that, you know, they're still trying to finally getting that first win, win for Nick Cushing, their interim head coach. You, you wonder, is this going to be, be the game to do so when they're about to face against a Revs team that, again, they're making a very slow progress to try to get them, them themselves out of, of the hole that they, that they dug themselves after a poor start to, to the season. And the last game against FC Cincinnati when they, they draw points at home does not help their cause in terms of getting themselves back to where they should be belong this season, which is competing for the Eastern Conference crown. Now, moving on in terms of the next match is none other than the granddaddy of them all in terms of rivalry game. That is the Cascadia Derby between the Seattle Sounders versus the Portland Timbers. Now, one thing about this Cascadia Derby is that the Sounders are going to unveil their, their CCL banner in, in this one. Because, I mean, it just makes perfect sense for them to, to do it in front of their most hated rival, Mo Face. And kind of just almost add insult to in, injury in terms term terms of the fact that they they, they are really they try, trying to to all, almost be be obnoxious and kind of, kind of just just once again again show show that you know they are indeed, indeed the best in MLS and that they are able to do something that no other MLS team has ever able to achieve until now and that you know the Timbers obviously you know I I know coming into this week Giovanni Savarese did make some comments about that that CCL win that the Sounders had, and he did not congratulate them. Instead, he he was pissed off. The fact that they, of course, were able to win CCL before them, and that this was a game where it's, it's almost like a revenge game that they had, that they're going to have against the the Sounders. Even though, again, you know, these two teams did not face against each other in in the playoffs or even even in the Concacaf Champions League. But 
They will face against each other in this game as the Sounders have an 8-2-7 and seven record while the Timbers have a 5-8-6 and six record. This game will start at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 1.55 p.m. local time. And I wrote this game is on ESPN. That's actually not true. This game is actually on F FS1 because, you know, when you look at the kickoff time, and in fact, I'll probably change that up right now because, again, this game is not on ESPN. Uh, it's going to be on FS1. I mean, ESPN gets the rights in terms of, of some of the games that's going to happen tonight. But it feels like in terms of the Saturday action, it's Fox turn in terms of uh, of getting these national televised games. But in terms of the last five head-to-head -head meeting, like I said, you know, when you look look at all these these Cascadia Derby, one thing that has been, been the case for the Cascadia Derby, at least in the past couple of years, is that the road team has done very well. Uh, in the last game, it was the Timbers winning 2-0 against the Sounders. Before that, it was a game that Timbers fans would not want to remember as they lost 6-2 at home and, and probably the most embarrassing and the most lopsided Cascadia Derby we have ever se seen in this long historic rivalry. Then it was a 2-1 win that the Sounders had against the Timbers before it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams, a rare draw in the Cascadia Derby. But then... The Timbers were able to win one nothing against the Sounders. And by the way, in terms of the all-time meeting, this is only in, in MLS. I know for a fact that they ha have met each other much more time than, than the all-time meeting that says. But this is only in the MLS era that they had. And in terms of the MLS era, Timbers does have a slight advantage with 17 wins compared to 15 that the Sounders had in this game. But obviously, there's no doubt that coming into this game, if I have to say who needs this Cascadia Derby wins the most, it's got to be the Portland Timbers. I mean, you know, I, I've, I've jokingly talked about how after such a slow start that they had, that they, they really be, need to play the Seattle Sounders because if they can win that game, that's always a game that really can turn turn around their season. And that I've said many times before where, you know, it's it might sound cliche that, you know, winning the Cascadia Derby means everything for the, these teams, but it kind of does, not only just for pride and, and also so some bragging rights, but also... Anytime when a team is able to win the Cascadia Derby, it can really propel, propel the, the rest of their season. And if that, of course, is the case, there's no doubt the Timbers want, want this one. Because in the last couple of games, the Timbers have started to show signs that they are coming back to life. And that they're trying to slowly get themselves out of the deep hole that they dug themselves in in the first half of the season. And a way to continue that is to beat the Sounders and continue this, this good resurgence that they, they had. Whereas for the Sounders, you know, they, they definitely want to get another win and especially finally getting a win against the Portland Timbers at home. I mean, it's been a long time since the, the, the Sounders have been able to beat the Timbers at Lumens Field, which again, it's odd the fact that the road team always win in the Cascadia Derby, but that's just kind of one of the quir quirky kind of facts and that, you know, they're looking, the Sounders are looking to try to break that, that, that mark by getting a big win in, in this one. But nevertheless, it's always great to see whenever both of these teams face off against each other and you know I will be keeping a very good eye in terms of talk about this game but now moving on in terms of the next match we got Atlanta United versus Austin FC so this of course is the first ever meeting between both of these teams as it is the case whenever Austin play against an Eastern Conference team uh, this game will start at 7 p.m. Eastern 4 p.m. Pacific but the actual kickoff is 7.08 p.m. local time Austin have a 10-4-4 record while well, Atlanta has a 5-5-7 five, five, and seven record. And there's no doubt that, you know, coming into this game, you could say that Austin maybe is a slight favorite coming into this one because I think if there's one thing that Austin has been, been proven during this tough stretch that they've been been through, through they they definitely have a respectable record coming in, in this tough stretch and that they have started to prove people that, yeah, that, that easy schedule that they, they start the season and then them be, being near the top spot in the Western Conference, is not a fluke whatsoever and now they face against a Atlanta United team that you know it's a team that is very inconsistent and it's a team team that there's been times where when they are at it they can definitely look like the Atlanta that we know of but when they're not at it yeah they look like like the Atlanta that we saw back in the 2020 season so there's no doubt that Austin would love to get all three points in this this one but like I said um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium is still one of the toughest places to get points in that you know we'll We'll see whether if Austin can, can do so. And if they can do so, then I think they've pretty much proven any last doubter that that are still still doubting that this team is not for real and that they're a pretender because of of an easy schedule. I mean, as I said, I think they're they're for real with the way that they doing this tough stretch, they're still able to emerge merge with, with with a decent 
uh, record and still now sitting in the sec second spot in the Western Conference. But now moving on in terms of the next match is Charlotte FC versus Nashville SC. And this is also another matchup that is going to be the first ever meeting. But this time, obviously, anytime when Charlotte play against a Western Conference team, you know it is the first ever meeting. And that, of course, is the case. And you could also say this is kind of a, a bit of a rivalry in some sense because, you know, I mean, they are kind of in the same region. And knowing the fact that this is on national television, I can't wait to hear how many times... They're going to mention that this is going to be a rivalry and that they're, they're, they're just going to say that this is kind of like the no-name rivalry and how it's going to be so cringe. Like, I swear, when I watch Charlotte play against Atlanta United and how many times they mention that is a rivalry and how they mention it's kind of a, like a no-name rivalry, it, it just makes me, me cringe with the way that I, I hate when MLS decided to for, force rivalry when, when it's just, just on, only started and that there's a reason why rivalry takes time to develop and it, it is built organically and that just doesn't seem like it's the case with the way that mls is just shoving rivalry left and right and that i won't be surprised this might be one of them though coming into this game uh charlotte does have a 7 2 and 10 record while nashville has a 7 6 and 5 record this game will start at 7 p.m eastern 4 p.m pacific but will kick off a little bit later than the atlanta versus austin game as it will kick off at 7.25 p.m. local time. And as I said, this is going to be on FS1. And that, fingers crossed, that they don't don't mention too much about, about the rivalry. I mean, if it gets sp spicy, maybe I, I, I'm i worried that they're going to mention it. Because when it gets spicy and there's tempers flare, you know the, the announcer are going to try to say, oh, this is a good example of a, of a rivalry. But let's just hope that this is going to be just a, a good game. And that, you know, both of these teams are looking to, to try to get, get a, well, you know, for Charlotte... You know, they got a huge, huge moment uh, just a couple of days ago winning their first road game. Let's see whether or not if they can continue that and not have a letdown. Whereas for Nashville SC, you know, the road has been, been their friend so far this season. And they're looking to try to con continue that in this game against Charlotte FC. But moving on in terms of the next match. And speaking of a team that the road has been the friend for them is the New York Red Bulls. Though, you know, lately it hasn't been the case except they did. Finally getting their first road win against Sporting KC. And now they get to play against FC Cincinnati, a team that is definitely in the upward projectile. Uh, they have a record of 7-4-7, seven, and seven, that is Cincinnati, while the Red Bulls have a 9-5-5 five, five record. And the Red Bulls are actually leading the, the Eastern Conference right now. Like, you couldn't tell, but they are actually le leading despite the fact that they have a 9-5-5 five, five record. And usually with that kind of record... That doesn't get you to the top of the Eastern Conference, but because of how how chaotic the Eastern Conference is, is this season, and it feels like, you know, there that the Eastern Conference, you know, I made that video talk about how it's just wide open. I think it's just gotten even more wide open with the way that nobody can sustain that for, first spot for a long period of time, and it just feels like that first spot is pretty much like hot potato potato and that don't be surprised the Red Bulls who are sitting in first in the Eastern Conference they could bounce that out out of that spot if they do lose to Cincinnati in this one. Now this game will start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 7.38 p.m. local time. All-time meeting, the Red Bulls does have, have a 5-1-2 and two record, and in terms of the last five head-to-head -head meeting, uh, the Red Bulls were able to walk away with a one nothing victory uh, the last time they faced against Cincinnati, and actually, oh, uh, this is a, I think this is, this is, um, wait, is that, is that, that wrong? Because, well, this was the second meeting between both of these teams, and that they shouldn't be playing at TQL Stadium for the second time. They already meet the first time. Actually, I might be mistaken from for for last year. But uh, before that, uh, it was a no no draw between both of these teams. Then a one nothing win that Cincinnati has against the Red Bulls. Then a two nothing win that Cincinnati has against the, the Red Bulls. And I think this was back in the MLS is back tournament because I think I do remember in the MLS is back tournament Cincinnati and the Red Bulls were in the same group and Cincinnati was able to get get wins against the Red Bulls, and that was one of those. And then bef before that, uh, the Red Bulls did win 3-2 against FC Cincinnati. But this is now at a time where both of these teams are a very decent team, and that should be a good, good matchup to see see whether or not if Cincinnati a team that, you know, as good as they have been this se season, one thing that they still kind of struggle so far has been their home form. I mean, their road form actually ha has been, been amazing. The home form is, is a bit of a problem because they're still dropping a lot of points. At, at home and even though there's times where you think that they should get all three points at home and then they do some some dumb things like what they did in the last game game against nycfc blow a three nothing lead and end up have to salvage a 4-4 draw but now moving on in terms of the next match 
is Montreal versus Sporting KC. So this game will start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 7.38 p.m. local time. Montreal has a 9-2-7 record, while Sporting KC have a 4-4-11 record. All-time meeting, Sporting KC does lead the, the, the all-time meeting, 7-3-4 over Montreal. And in terms of the last five head-to-head -head meeting, yeah, Montreal fans would not want it want to remember the last time they faced Sporting KC because it was an absolute 2-2 two -two draw between both of these teams and then a 2-1 win that Sporting KC had against Montreal. And knowing the fact that Montreal just came off of a very disappointing 4th of July uh, game against the Galaxy. You know they, they want to have a bounce back. Especially against an SKC team that, like I said, I think this season. If there is one team that we can say that that probably is not going to make the playoffs. And maybe have already kicked themselves out of contention in the busy season. But yeah, moving on in terms of the next match is Toronto FC versus the San Jose Earthquakes. So if there is a place that the Quakes can finally get their first road win of the season, it's definitely this game. Uh, you know, TFC obviously is not doing well this season, both at home and away. But also, you know, the last time the Quakes were able to get a win against an Eastern Conference team on the road, it's against Toronto FC. And the other good thing about this game for the Quakes is that they don't have to face Lorenzo Insigne in this game. As I mentioned, you know, Insigne, he is he is going to be be out for, for at least these next two weeks. And his debut is going to be pushed back until July 23rd because of the calf injury that, that he's ha currently he has. And that I think I'm kind of glad the fact that Insigne is not go going to be making his debut in this one. Because imagine how he is going to absolutely cut open that... that that Quakes team and that I've seen before where the Quakes play against a, a team that has a big name player that made their debut and that big name player absolutely chew, chew up that Quakes defense and especially how this Quakes defense has been optional you no know, at best at times yeah and Sydney is going to have a fun time with it but the good news is he's not going to be be there and the same goes with Alejandro Pasuelo who as I mentioned he he has officially made his transfer move to Inter Miami and that it's pretty clear that this TFC team for these next couple of weeks are just go, going to be in a bit of a limbo state because like I said they're still trying to get some of the these big signing in before maybe they're going to make a late push for for the playoffs I mean as I said the east is so wide open right now that even with TFC being near the bottom of, of the standings they still have a shot if they can can get get a winning streak going and I think that's what Bob Bradley and this TFC front office is thinking where yes it has been a bad start but they're not that far out of the playoffs as some people might think they are Though that being said, their record is 5-3-10, and 10, while the Quakes have a 4-6-7 and 7 record. Uh, this game will start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 7.38 p.m. local time. All-time meeting, the Quakes does have a 6-6-5 six, six, and five record over TFC. And in terms of the last five head-to-head meeting, it was a 2-2 draw between both of these teams before the Quakes won 2-1 on the road against Toronto. Then it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams, and then TFC did win 4-0 against the Quakes, but that was back during the time when TFC was at the peak of their power. And then the Quakes did win 2-1 against TFC. So again, it's a team that they do do well. And that, again, if there is a time the Quakes need to get a, a road win against an easy opponent, this is definitely one of those times. But like I said, you know, I've seen before where the, the Quakes do play against easy team on the road. And even teams that are not doing well this season on the road. And they somehow still end up on the losing end. So I'm, as much as I'm, kind of optimistic that they can can get their first road win this this game i'm also kind of pessimistic the fact that i would not be surprised if they lo lose the, this game because that would be such a quakes ca kind of thing to, to lose to a team that is near the bottom of the eastern conference on the road and a team that they have relatively good good re record against at least in these last five games 
But now moving on in terms of the next match, we got the Chicago Fire versus the Columbus Crew. So this game will start at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 7.08 p.m. local time. Uh, the Fire has a 4-5-9 and nine record, while the Crew has a 5-7-5 five, and five record. And in terms of the all-time meeting, uh, it's a 30-23-23 advantage for the Fire. And in terms of the last five head-to-head -head matchup, it was a 2-2 draw between both of these teams before it was a 1-1 draw between both of the, these teams. Then Columbus won 2-0 against Chicago. Then it was a 2-2 draw between both of these teams. And then the crew, of course, went 3-0 against the Chicago Fire. So, obviously, you know, the crew that definitely has the upper hand in this one. But Chicago is a team that at least they're starting to show signs that at home they can be, be a decent team. I mean, they have won their last two home game, albeit by, by only a goal, goal to nil. But... You know, like I said, you know, they, even though they're sitting in the bottom of the Eastern Conference, and as I mentioned, how wide open the East is, they're not really out, out of it ju just yet. I mean, they are kind of further than anybody else in terms of the playoff line in the East, being sitting at the, the rock of the, the or rock bottom of the, the Eastern Conference. But it doesn't mean that they can, can still still make a good run in that. Again, if this team can just figure out their, their goal-scoring problem, this team can, can definitely make make a run but it's easier said to be done when you have goal scoring problem because goal scoring problem is not one of the things that is the easiest to fix and especially when you when you build a team and a lot of these players that are underperforming at a level that this fire team has it's kind of hard to, to try to fix it but again let's just hope that maybe some of these wins and finally them breaking through in one of these game scoring goals might be be a spark for that because I, f I really think this team could be a decent team if they can can actually score score some goals but now moving on in terms of the next match is orlando city versus inter miami so the florida derby is happening once again as this game will start at 8 p.m eastern 5 p.m pacific but the actual kickoff is 8 8 p.m local time all-time meeting orlando does have a 4-2 and 2 advantage over miami and by the way in terms of the record orlando does have a 7-4 and 7 record while miami has a 6-4 and 7 record and in terms of the last five head-to-head -head matchup the last time both of these teams played at Exploria, it was a 0-0 draw. Before, it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams. By the way, that 0-0 draw, I think, was in the U.S. Open Cup earlier this season. But Orlando, was, a, I think, was able to, to win on penalties. Then, before that, it was a 2-1 win that Orlando has against Miami. Before, Miami returned the favor by winning 2-1 against Orlando. And then, Orlando returned the favor to Miami, winning 2-1 in that match, too. And that, I mean, at least for Inter-Miami, the good news is, you know, their, their role form and that their role form has started to become a little bit, bit better whereas for Orlando you know this is a team that have dropped a lot of points at home and have lost a lot of games at home and I've uh, talked about how inconsistent that, that they have been and that you know I, I think you can clearly say that they're probably the most inconsistent team right now in MLS but the bad news for Inter Miami Orlando City just came off of a loss against DC United and when they came off of a loss you probably know that they're probably going to win the next game. And knowing the history between both of these Florida teams facing off against each other, it's usually the team in, in Central Florida that is able to get get the, the better of their South Florida rival in in this game whenever it's been happening at Orlando. So we'll see whether if Orlando can bounce back, as they have done pretty much every single time following a loss, uh, or will Inter Miami maybe make some history in this game. Because if there's also one thing that, that doesn't, give Inter Miami an advantage in this game against Orlando City. They've never beaten Orlando City at, at Exploria Stadium. But now moving on in terms of the next match is the Texas Derby between the Houston Dynamo versus FC Dallas, also known as El Capitan. Now this game will start at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 7.38 p.m. local time. The Dynamo have a 6-3 and 9 record, while Dallas have a 7-6 and 5 record. And it's safe to say that both of these Texas teams have not done well in the in these last couple of games i mean the dynamo dropping po points at home to a team that have never won won a road game has to be embarrassing whereas for fc dallas dropping more points at at home and have really come back down to earth after such an incredible start to the season but in terms of the all-time meeting it's an 18 16 and 14 record in favor of dallas and in terms of the last five head ten meeting dallas did win 2-1 against houston before the Dynamo won 3-2 against Dallas. And then it was a 2-2 draw between both of these teams. A 1-1 draw between both of these teams. And then Dallas winning 3-0 against the Houston Dynamo. And I think you can even safely say that this is kind of a desperation derby. For both of these teams. Not only trying to get, get wins so that they can catch up to Austin FC. In terms of the Copa TR standings. I think Los Verde is actually at the top of the standings right now. 
but also the fact that both of these teams desperately need a win because of how bad their their form has been in these in these last couple of games and we'll see who eventually could win this desperation derby of all of this week and in the latest edition of the Texas Derby. But now moving on into the last match of the Saturday action and we finish off with another another rivalry matchup which is one of the more more underrated and kind of uh, kind of unhyped game. Well, actually unhyped. I'm not sure if that's even a, a word there, but if it is a word, I think it perfectly describes this game between RSL versus the Colorado Rapids where, you know, some still debate whether or not if it's actually a rivalry. I think it is. I mean, anytime when there's a trophy on the line, you, you, you have to say that it's kind of a rivalry game because it is the Rocky Mountain Cup between both of these Rocky Mountain team that is Real Salt Lake versus the Colorado Rapids. Now, RSL has an 8-5-5 five, five record while the Rapids have a 5-4-8 and eight record. This game will start at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is 8.08 .08 p.m. local time. In terms of the all-time meeting, RSL has dominated the, the Rocky Mountain Cup with a 25-12-13 and 13 record over the Colorado Rapids. But in terms of the last five head-to-head -head meeting, it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams before RSL winning 3-1 against the Rapids. Then the Rapids did win 2-1 against RSL. Then it was a 3-0 win that RSL had over Colorado. And then uh, the, the other matchup, it was one of the rare times that the Rapids were able to absolutely destroy Real Salt Lake at Rio Tinto Stadium by winning 5-0 in that one. In fact, you know, besides that outlier matchup, uh, the Rapids playing at, at the ride has been nothing but misery. I mean, it's been a house of horror for, for them whenever they play RSL. Now at the riot and that I feel like this could be, be be something that could continue because of the fact that RSL, you know, they definitely want to bounce back after after just falling short in terms of comeback against Minnesota on the road. Whereas for the Rapids, I mean they have been in in in, in a free fall in these last couple couple of games and it's not gonna help help them to, to, to end that free fall when they're about to play against a team that they do not have a good history and also a place that they definitely do not have a good history history at all but either way hope you guys enjoy this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash the subscribe button let me know in the comments below what do you think of these games and also the six other games that i mentioned earlier but until then hope you guys enjoy this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time